Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with my next video. And I just want to start off this video by saying that unfortunately the replays were wiped from the uh, little balancing update that came out. So I don't have any attacks. So today we're doing another defensive video. I'm not sure what tomorrow is going to look like because we don't start our next search until tomorrow, which is for the arranged war this weekend, which I am in, by the way. So I should be able to. Uh, provide a live attack hopefully and maybe some other live action from that war as well as some base destruction recaps all the usual stuff so um, <clears throat> the attacking side of the channel will be back uh, as soon as that war gets going but for now we're stuck kind of without replays so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to um, talk a little bit about Inferno Tower compartments at Town Hall 10 because uh, I've done a few Town Hall 9 videos uh, in the, recently, and I think it's time to do a Town Hall 10 video. Not going to do a full live base build here. We're just talking about Inferno Towers and uh, your different options as far as uh, what compartments to put them in. Now, you can put them in just a normal compartment, but typically what you see at Town Hall 10 on these anti three star bases is people putting their Infernos in a compartment by themselves or at least with no other defenses. So, we're going to talk a little bit about your options, a little bit about what the core your base should look like in between both your inferno towers and uh, just go from there so uh, let's start off right here with this first inferno tower uh, this is the standard uh, compartment that we saw as soon as bowlers became popular basically what this is doing is it's just keeping the inferno tower uh, two tiles away from every wall a bowler can't reach it the queen can snipe over and uh, that's going to be the, the main troop that you have to watch out for but it is good against miners because if you have buildings around it that are touching or at least pretty close like this the miners are going to typically path around it so it's hard to path the miners into it but when the miners do get there uh, there's not a whole lot of things stopping them from taking out the inferno pretty quickly unless you put some skellies there or something so <clears throat> all around it's basically a good compartment um, it's not that big which helps for your base design and it can defend pretty well against bowlers and miners but if there is a building here I think the bowler on their second bounce can sometimes hit the inferno I think the reach is there so keep that in mind uh, this one down here it, we'll just move this inferno on over this one is the same thing except it's only on one side of the inferno on the bottom right you can see it's just touching the wall so if you want to have a more compact base you can go ahead and go with this now I would recommend putting some giant bombs in this area right here here because it's probably people are going to come on one side of the base and try to make their way through your core because this inferno is so accessible assuming uh assuming this side is facing the core right here which it probably will be but it's another good way to adjust that for a more compact base uh, because compact bases do work well and they can throw people off a lot uh, this is for a more spread out base and i'll go ahead and move this inferno over briefly uh, right here this is for a more spread out base and you can put you know a builder's hut or just a few walls right here even and uh, this is defending against a queen charge now we did have the update i don't know what kind of what queen charges are going to be after the update <clears throat> so it might not make sense to use this anymore but basically if the queen is out here she can't reach the inferno tower because it's four tiles uh between the inferno and the wall so uh that's you want to have that long side facing towards uh kind of the exposed part where it's closest to being to the outside of the base so this was popular a little while back it might not be as as important now because we might not see as many queen charges but it's a good way to protect that inferno uh, even if it's not a queen charge even if just the queens in the kill squad she can't reach it over those walls so anyway those are the two or the three uh, kind of compartments that are pretty similar in that respect this one now is, is starting to put trash buildings inside with the inferno and the main reason we started seeing this is because of miners if people can get miners into your inferno tower it'll go down pretty quickly but if you have some hp right next to your inferno tower the miners get stuck on that you can put some skeleton traps too and that way uh the the miners are going to be up on these high hp buildings for a long period of time meaning they won't get the benefit of the heal from from dipping down and hopefully there's other defenses nearby to start targeting those miners and starting to do some damage to their health because the inferno honestly doesn't do a whole lot of damage it just blocks the heal uh so anyway 
this is how this compartment looks. You can see the walls are still uh, two tiles away from these because a bowler on the second bounce would go, if it could reach this, it would just go straight from there onto the Inferno and the Inferno would go down pretty easily. But by having the two uh, wall buffer between the storage and the wall, you're ensuring that, that bowlers can't reach the uh, storages unless they're on this angle, in which case the Inferno isn't lined up. So this is basically to defend against miners, but also defend against bowlers. Now you can take a risk and uh, have the walls like that, but if bowlers do come up, they're just gonna take out your Inferno pretty easily just by going from the storage on the second bounce over to the Inferno Tower. So keep that in mind, however you wanna play around with that. Um, I think we have one more at the bottom here. I will move this Inferno over for here. This is the same thing, but it's a little bit more anti-Valk. If you think your base might get hit by Valks, you don't want to have everything touching. So this way, uh, the uh, unlike the previous one, it's not in a Valk magnet. It's not going to pull those Valks in because the buildings aren't touching down here. So it takes up a little more space. Once again, you can play around with the walls. They don't have to be so far apart from the storages. But uh, however you do it, this is a good way to defend against miners, bowlers, and Valks, although it does take up quite a bit of real estate. So anyway, those are kind of the basic Inferno Tower compartments we see. As far as a core, I just made an example right here, and maybe it'll be easier to go into photo mode. This is the example, really. You can see that um, Wizard Towers are pretty good in the core alongside high HP buildings, and basically what they, the Wizard Towers and the high HP buildings do is they provide something for miners to get stuck on. The storages in the clan castle are pretty high HP. The miners are going to get stuck on them probably and take a while to take them out. And while they're stuck on those buildings, the giant bombs go off. You get that splash damage. You can have skeleton traps to hold them up even longer. And those wizard towers, especially if they're max for Town Hall 10, which mine now are, they can get some uh, pretty solid amounts of splash damage on those miners and if you have an inferno tower nearby that's a bonus so these two little uh air traps would represent where your infernos would go so sometimes you want to have a little bit of a skinnier core like this that's kind of skinny sideways and that way you can fit you know possibly a very large inferno tower compartment uh by on either side of that because if you have a big core your base might get too big if, if you try to have big inferno tower compartments next to it so that's an example for the core i still like having giant bombs in the middle i think it's a good way to defend against pretty much the meta for town hall 10 ground attacks which is valks miners bowlers all that stuff typically is going to go in the core and this is a good way to defend against that and this way you can also keep your point defense more towards the outside to you know defend against the initial funnel just to get that damage going early not don't let them set up too much uh, with their attack before they enter the base get the damage going as soon as they drop a golem or whatever they do to start off their attack whether it's a queen walk or whatever so anyway thanks for watching this video that's all i have for you guys today i'm not sure what i'm gonna do tomorrow but i'll make something work and uh just you know hang tight if you're looking for some more attacks because we still have to wait um until one hive gen genesis uh, searches and we get in that arranged war which will be tomorrow uh, the search so anyway like i said thanks for watching and hope you at least you know found a few things helpful in this video uh, especially for those of you town hall tens out there and i'll see you guys later bye sectatron out